Most of the time when you solve an equation in math class, there's one answer that your teacher or the book is looking for. But that's not how it works out in real life all the time. There are possible equations where there are no solutions or infinitely many solutions or maybe just one. In these problems, we need to find out how many solutions there are. Now let me show you how that works. Let's um, take a look at this first one. You can see here we've got this big long equation. It looks like there's some distribution to do, so let's do that first. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Then we have plus 5x equals, and 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 6 is minus 12. Now we need to do some combining of like terms. We have a negative 3x and a positive 5x. That comes out to 2x minus 15 equals 2x minus 12. You might already start to notice something funny here, but the next step, if we're solving this in the normal way, would be to try to get rid of one of these x terms. I'm going to try to get rid of this 2x over here by subtracting 2x. Of course, I have to do that over here too. And when you do that, all your x's disappear. This is 0, this is 0. We just have negative 15 equals negative 12. Now, what does that mean? Well, clearly, this statement is false. Negative 15 does not equal negative 12. If that's what happens when you try to solve an equation, that means there are zero solutions. There are no solutions to this. There's no number you could put in for x up here that would make this work out. All right, let's try the next one. Again, we'll start with distribution. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is 4 we have plus x. 8 times x is 8x. Eight, 8 times negative 1 is minus 8 plus 6. Let's combine our like terms. 4x and x is 5x. Then we have our plus 4. 8x, there's nothing to combine there. And then negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Uh, and let's see, in this case, I think I'm going to try to get rid of this 5x. So we'll subtract 5x from both sides. I'm going to move over here a little bit. So we're going to get... 0x uh, over there, sorry, just the 4, and over here we're going to get 3x and minus 2, and then we can add 2 to both sides, so we get 3x equals 6, so x equals 2 here. So that is a more typical problem where there is one solution. If you end up with x equaling just that number, that's the only number, the only solution for that equation. All right, let's try one more here. Again, we'll start with a distribution. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6. Then we have plus 4x. And 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. Combining our like terms over here, negative 2x and a positive 4x, that's a positive 2x plus 6 equals oh, 2x plus 6. You may already see something's up here. If we go forward and try to solve, we try to get rid of the x's on one side by subtracting 2x over here. If I do that, all our x's disappear, they go to 0, and we get 6 equals 6. Now that is a true statement. 6 does equal 6. What this means is you have infinitely many solutions for this equation. Any number you plug in for x here is going to cause this statement to be true. So that's a little bit of work in figuring out whether an equation has zero, one, or infinitely many solutions.